What's up, guys? Derek, more plates, more dates.com. Today, I am going to be talking about CB0301. So, this is a topical anti androgen that has a lot of hype in the hair loss community. Yes, there is a community, and uh, some of you guys might find that laughable, but it really isn't. It's a very tight knit group of individuals who are on the cutting edge of figuring out how to solve this thing. So as far as CB0301, my thoughts, the cost effectiveness of it um, in relation to the next best alternative. First of all, I see that as a huge limiting factor right now. It's uh, even if you bought it from where you can get it, it's uh, super expensive, like several fold more expensive than the alternatives. And as far as its efficacy, I have yet to see it outperform anything else in the anti-androgen space for hair loss prevention. Clinical data shows it's like somewhere in the ballpark of finasteride's efficacy. But as you probably already know, finasteride is just a band-aid at the end of the day. It might sustain you for 10 to 20 to 30 years if you're lucky, but eventually you're going to start losing again. That's just what happens when you don't take care of testosterone as well. However, CB, because the antiandrogen binds to the androgen receptor and basically prevents testosterone and DHT from inducing their harmful miniaturizing effects in theory. This would, despite in the short term, exhibiting results similar to finasteride in the long term, it would very likely outperform it. As far as uh, comparing it to the next best alternatives, what comes to mind is RU58841, among other less notable ones that are in the community that nobody really uses and who have used it, haven't really noticed anything from them. RU, hit or miss for a lot of people as well. And CB is, I have yet to hear anybody have significantly better results from CB to RU or any other anti-androgen. And uh, it might even be worse, according to some people. Um, I haven't used it personally. Based on what I've heard from guys I know, I probably am not going to use it anytime soon. However, it's on my kind of list of stuff to delve into a bit deeper. And it has some promise. And the fact that it's in a pipeline right now to be FDA approved as the first topical anti-androgen on the market, shows a lot of promise as well. Its safety profile is the thing that should be noted. In contrast to something like RU, there, there's a more safety data on CB, especially because it's going through clinical trials right now. It's not some experimental compound from 20 years ago that had like one or two trials on it. It's literally like almost approved right now for androgenic alopecia and I believe acne as well which, you know, interestingly enough, RU is looked at for acne as well. And obviously, you know, there's some uh, correlation there. So as far as uh, why this is being approved and not the other ones, um, I think a lot of it has to do with the business side as opposed to the overall efficacy of the product. The only downside I really see, like CB supposedly is lower incidence of side effects, meaning you could use more of it technically to achieve the same results you would of a lower, more side effect ridden antiandrogen, supposedly in theory. In what I've seen, the side effects are the same as you would expect from any antiandrogen that goes systemic. So obviously it's gonna depend on your scalp porosity. Um, it's gonna depend on application technique. It's gonna depend on product in, on the scalp, sebum levels, all this kind of stuff that you know, are going to vastly impact how this stuff is going to work or not work on somebody's head. If it does get approved, the problem I see is that even if you, let's just say it gets approved in the next, I don't know, like two to three years or whatever, which is probably conservative, the price of it for the dose you're going to get, it's very likely not going to be sufficient. And when you go into the, you know, underground space to try and get it as well the price point is several times higher than the alternatives so when it comes to cost it doesn't seem to be a good choice at least right now that remains to be seen in the future as far as overall efficacy though it doesn't seem to be any greater than stuff that's already being used in the community as is i don't think it's the solution like just put it that way like uh, 
overarching opinion on it. I just, uh, from what I've seen personally and the guys I know who have used it, it doesn't seem to be, uh, it's going to work for some people. Don't get me wrong. The RE works for some people. CB works for some people. And the people who can afford to pay for it are going to, you know, use it. And then some people who want a more cost-effective alternative will probably choose RU still, but both are still going to have their deficiencies in terms of overall efficacy for the general population. There's going to be people it doesn't work for. And that's just what happens for every drug, though, to be honest. And there's going to be people who experience side effects, people who don't experience side effects. That's just a given. I think it's going to be a good tool. I don't think it's going to be a full solution, though, for the majority of people dependent on a few factors that I don't think are going to be addressed properly. <laughs> and by that, I mean the literal delivery of it to the hair follicle. I don't see it being, just put it this way, it's a lot easier to pop a pill. No one's going to screw that up. As far as literally applying something to your scalp properly, ensuring everything's clean, there's no like sebum blocking it, there's no like hair sucking up the liquid, there's no this, there's no that, there's no uh, the thickness of the scalp of a bald person or a balding person versus a non-balding person is quite a bit different and that's going to affect the absorption as well. There's a lot of factors that can cause vast variations in even just delivery of a compound when it comes to topicals versus literal orals where it's like any idiot can pop a pill but not every single person is going to apply this topical antiandrogen properly and the dosage provided is probably not going to be sufficient like you're going to be limited by your doctor whatever they want to think you need and I would be surprised if they gave a dose high enough for like a diffuse thinner to apply it all over his head. You know what I mean? Anyways, that's kind of my opinion on it. I don't like I see it as, you know, well, it's a good thing. There's a topical antiandrogen in the pipeline that's almost approved, but I don't uh, I'm not super excited about it. Like, you know what I mean? That's that's my opinion on it. I think uh, it it's promising. I don't think it's a solution, though, for. You know, at the end of the day, for most, for a decent amount of people, it might work. But, you know, just like anti-androgens in the community right now, it's hit or miss for some people. And uh, CB is going to be hit or miss too, in my opinion. And it's proven to be so far. So anyways, remains to be seen. I'll keep you guys posted if I change my thoughts, if I decide to, you know, bring it into my protocols or what I think about it as, you know, time goes on. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe. Check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Subscribe there. Check me out on Instagram, at moreplates, underscore more dates. I post mildly interesting stories once in a while. So <laughs> tune into those. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, etc. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.